analog switches. What is the big deal? Wooden keyboards have been doing it for years. SteelSeries is in the game with the Omnipoint switches and now the Razer Huntsman V2 analog. So the same switch as we saw on the Razer Tartarus Pro, but now on a full size keyboard. This is not a review of this keyboard, but I want to use this keyboard as a jump off point into discussion about analog switches, why they are important, but also, why it's mostly marketing. I get that there are multiple technical advantages when it comes to analog switches, when it comes to variable actuation point, multiple actuation points, and of course the whole analog movement mimicking a joystick on the keyboard. But every time this comes out, I try to bring myself to use it and I always encounter all these challenges. So that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. The Extrify M42 RGB, what a fun mouse with five colorways, lightweight frame and just 59 grams with a swappable backplate to suit your grip style, the sensor, the easy core, the smooth skates and driverless control for RGB and DPI is why you should check out the M42 RGB down below. All right, so first of all, what is analog? In a traditional keyboard switch, you have on and off state, right, when you press it. But with analog, you have 256 levels of that press. In simple terms, it's simulating movement of an analog stick on a joystick with the ability to have finer control in each direction, depending on how far down you press. And the first challenge here is actually finger memory because having precise vertical movement is incredibly difficult. Even if you reach desired speed of your character in game, it's incredibly difficult to keep that as a constant because the nearby fingers are activating the nearby keys and therefore the pressure on that original key is going to change. The switches of course are linear and are perfectly smooth so well done Razer but they're not heavy enough to reach that desired control in that vertical movement. But say you master the whole physical precision with your fingertips, the second main challenge would be game compatibility. It's kind of weird to say that in 2021. I mean, analog keyboards have been out for years and we still haven't reached that perfect synchronization between the two. And that is because the game has to support the controller, the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. And sometimes there certain weirdness happens. So this is what it looks like when the game does not support the controller and the mouse at the same time in the game control. You can see I have analog movement, but as soon as I move the mouse, my analog keys are disabled and I cannot use the two simultaneously. Obviously this is not an issue when you use WASD as the keyboard inputs and I've encountered the same issue in many other games, including the incredible Mad Max, where using the mouse to look around the car, for example, interrupts my analog controls and makes the game unplayable. Then I had this really strange experience in the game Ashen. It's a really cool third person open world game that is perfect for controller and analog movement in general. But every time I would move my mouse after engaging in my analog movement, uh, there would be this weird stutter, almost like this weird lag after it starts to process both the controller and the mouse movement. And I don't experience the stutter with just the keyboard and the mouse. Then we have games that don't have any mouse movement whatsoever, like the new cinematic horror, The Medium. And this is actually a game where a controller is perfect, so having analog movement on your keyboard is kind of ideal because the standard was movement is janky AF since you move like a drunk robot, not sure about which direction you want to go into, and having more finesse with my direction is actually quite good. Although I also had the game not recognize my analog movement whatsoever, but that's probably because of Synapse. So not really game dependent, but still an issue that I was trying to figure out what was happening. I thought the game was not recognizing my analog inputs, but in fact, it was the software, which by the way, has been a nightmare while making this video. Synapse, man. It has to get better. Then we have Pumpkin Jack, where everything works with analog movement, no issues with the mouse, but when you're running around as Jack, there's actually no point in having finer movement control with your keyboard because you can have super smooth and really accurate rotation with your mouse instead. I did find that movement when you're just a pumpkin head, really nice with analog, so that's probably the only game I've experienced where there's that noticeable benefit. Then we have the game called Hades. My gosh, what an incredible title this one, where everything works just fine. You can see the difference in analog movement versus standard WASD. And for this game, it's not so much for the speed control that's really good, but it's the angle of movement that's fantastic, allowing you to have really good control while running around. There are no issues with mouse movement and having that 360 degree of keyboard direction is a benefit in avoiding incoming fire and just accurately moving through each level. And then there are two games that I thought would be fantastic for analog controls, but I was proved 
Drong, and that is the underwater explorer uh, game called Abzu, and the game that will absolutely test your patience called Mud Runner. So as you swim in this beautiful underwater world, the keyboard controls by default have a really nice smoothness to them, so you don't jerk around when trying to change direction, meaning any analog input for finer control are not really necessary. While in Mudrunner, the steering wheel already has a lot of weight to it with uh, the standard WAS controls, so the only advantage you get with analog is the smoother visual rotation of the wheel, and that only matters when you're really inside the vehicle, so you don't see the unnatural small rotations when doing any finer adjustments in the standard WAS configuration. Now to address the big elephant in the room, and that is competitive Fortnite. We've received so many requests based on our polls on community and Twitter, about why analog keyboards matter. And so many of you responded that Fortnite is one of those games that really kind of exploded analog in popularity because it gives you that 360 degree movement and apparently it's a big advantage for that title. I don't play it, so I don't have it downloaded, but just to keep that in mind, Fortnite with analog is like the killer way to dominate. Now let's move on to the third challenge and that is the setup. So all companies, Razer, Cooler Master, Steel Series, and Wooding are doing it differently from the software side. For example, there is no hand holding from Razer to give you recommended key binds and configurations for like specific game genres. I had to manually rebind my WAS area to the L joystick movement, save that as a different profile because otherwise WAS is disabled even for typing, and then activate that profile in game when needed. For wooden keyboards, it is much simpler. There's an actual mode switch allowing you to go from standard keyboard to analog mode. Uh, with a click of a button, while with Razer you have to like create those two profiles separately. Also, none of the brands have a list of recommended games for analog movement, and that kind of sucks. Yeah, most just say that it's great for driving games, so it's great for 360 degree movement, and I would definitely recommend you check out Aimpad for a list of compatible games that even has notes on analog controls per game, which is super appreciated for new users. The only games I would recommend analog for are flying games, although I don't play any racing games, although I don't play any as well, and third-person games that uh, work very well with the 360-degree movement, as long as there's no weird issues with the mouse. Now, moving on to the next most practical and beneficial function of analog switches, that would be adjustable actuation point. With Razer switches, that range is between 1.5 and 3.6 millimeters, adjusted in 0.1 millimeter steps. It's cool because you can alternate between high actuation point to mimic a fast switch, or if you want to lower that actuation point all the way down to 3.6 for heavy typing, be my guest. It's a really cool hybrid to create one for gaming scenario, one for typing scenario, and it's a, it's kind of nice to once in a while change the actuation point. It's almost like having multiple keyboards built into one. The challenge over here is knowing what setting would be best for you, but luckily Synapse was updated recently to give you a visual indicator on the actuation point slider, so you know exactly when the switch will actuate and set that point accordingly. That's awesome. SteelSeries also did a good job with the visual slider on the keyboard itself, so you can see what level you hit, and then in the software you had a range of 1 to 10 that corresponds to the tick marks on the screen. And finally, the dual step actuation point is really unique because it lets you have two functionalities on a single switch depending on how far down you press. So for example, step one can be your regular W for default movement at let's say 1.5 millimeters, but as you fully bottom out, that can be shift W for faster movement. In theory, this is awesome, right? Because you can activate multiple macros depending on what you play, but I had to ask around to get people's opinion on how this dual actuation point could be actually useful in games and not just as something as a feature that is kind of cool in the sidelines but is never actually utilized. And now we come back to challenge number one with precise finger movement and that I mean, that's relevant when it comes to dual actuation points. How do you activate the first point and not the second when they're like so close together, just like less than two millimeters apart? So for anything FPS related, analog movement and dual actuation points, forget about it. For CSGO and Tarkov in my game style, it's completely useless and actually complicates things more than helping me evolve with the keyboard and use it to my advantage. I can't do it. And I wanna finish with the following. Based on our community responses and our Twitter responses, uh, asking people if they wanna play with analog switches, most people say yes, because it's something new to them, but 
my advice is to maybe think about the commitment that it will take to retrain your fingers to properly utilize this whole analog dual step actuation point uh, before committing to a keyboard. Because if you're just gonna end up bottoming out and using the keyboard as a standard keyboard, might as well look at a regular linear switch that is going to be much, much cheaper than the current analog options anyway. And also software is everything to make sure that you have a good user experience when it comes to analog controls, uh, especially for new users. Wooden is by far the best one in the, in the business right now in terms of having a community that share profiles and have a really good support system. But uh, I feel like Razer, SteelSeries, Cooler Master have to really kind of step it up in order to give you a bit more hand-holding because like just diving into Razer Synapse and not knowing what controls what in terms of like your analog movement, that can be really tough and challenging. So some more hand-holding from the software side would be highly appreciated. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this whole analog direction for keyboards and switches. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.